Welcome to Startup Pack. All right, everybody. I know everybody's talking about the huge, massive models with billions of parameters to build these amazing AI applications and go after AGI. But you know me, I'm not all about that. I love these small LM. So stick around because I'm gonna show you what I found with the 5.4 mini model, do some real, uh, real live uh, tests for you and kind of show you what I found and dig into this today. So let's dive in. <laughs> Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer Thompson. Here at Startup Pack, we love to trade software developers and our licensed coding boot camps, as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. With over a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. So Microsoft's 5.4 Mini runs at just 1.3 billion parameters, and they have, uh, so let's dive, jump over here and take a look at some of their models here. So Microsoft released their five their five mini uh, models, and um, the five mini the text only five four mini. The second model is the five four multimodal, which is an upgraded version of the mini and can process visual and audio input. Right. So the text only model is three point eight billion parameters, and it makes it compact enough to be able to run on multiple devices. So if we go look here, this model is running right around two point five gigs. So this is definitely something that you could potentially be running on some embedded hardware, right? Um, and so this is a great device because it also uses a second performance optimization technique called grouped query attention or Q GQA. Now I love to see this stuff because I love to see, um, uh, you know, innovation happening here and let's dive right into Microsoft's own announcement, right? They talked first about the five, four multimodal, and this is interesting. It's definitely going to require a little bit hard, larger hardware. So with 5.6 billion, it runs, it will run good on something that has eight gigs of graphics or more. Uh, of GPU, but definitely you're not going to find this being able to run fast enough on a CPU or on uh, or on smaller uh, GPUs, right? And so uh, what I'm really interested in here is the 5.4 Mini. So the 5.4 Mini is a 3.8 billion parameter model and it's a dense decoder only transformer featuring group by query attention, 200,000 vocabulary and sh uh, shared input output embedded. Now. Um, they're saying that it supports sequence up to 128,000 tokens and delivers a high accuracy and scalability. So they're showing some of these numbers. I didn't quite get this results, but like we can show you what I was playing with. And so they've got some testimonials here, which sounds really great. Now, uh, you know, I was diving in and using this. I wasn't using Llama CPP or directly using it. So I am trying to use some of the, I did find the Fi cookbook and find out. Um, and I was looking at the 5.4 mini here, which they were using. Um, and this is running on Olama. Now, a couple of notes about running this on Olama. You've got to have the 5.13. But before we dive into that, we'll go more into that in some of our uh, coding samples here. But I want to dig into a little bit more about what this is going to mean for us, right? Because this model is small enough to be able to run on consumer hardware and on a single server. So you don't need to have like an A100, don't need to have an H100, don't need to have you know crazy storage to run in the cloud. This is something you can definitely run inside your own machines, right? The new 5.4 family supports modal, multimodal as well. Um, and so definitely something you can be running within both of these. Now, you could take a tool that takes screenshots of buggy UIs and suggest code fixes. You can do lots of different things with this, uh, with the multimodal one. Now, Microsoft's research team has made some fascinating architectural choices to squeeze more performance from fewer parameters. They've implemented this technique of mixture of experts that dynamically activates only the relevant part of the model. Now, the training data was specifically curated for developer-focused tasks rather than general knowledge. So again, this is where I'm really interested in this because I think for developers and for building applications where you can train on specific use cases, this is gonna be really powerful. Now, the model excels at completing partial code snippets and understanding programming patterns, um, but the architecture is also designed for easy fine tuning so you can adapt it to a specific uh, code base or to a programming style. Now, this is going to mean that if you're running locally, it's going to be able to run on something even like a Raspberry Pi 4. Now, I don't think the 3 gig one is going to run very well against that, right? The 5.4 the Mini right now is definitely still too big to be able to run entirely on your Raspberry Pi, but uh, you know we're, we're getting closer and closer, right? So I'm interested to see how the, the Mini will perform against it. Now, 
five fours mini efficiency makes it a perfect as the found as the foundation for autonomous coding agents uh, and just for any agents right not just coding but for being able to process uh things using an agent so think of spinning up some dockers running them against a, a good llm uh, this is a great opportunity for you to be able to build some in-house applications that you can uh, build some great things at right now there, the 5.4 Mini achieves an 84% success rate compared to larger models, 87 to 90%. So 84%, you know, that six to 10% difference is not that bad when you're looking at, you know, how this is. And with real world testing, I, I'm seeing definitely some, some interesting stuff, but again, I am running on some, some pre-release information. So let me switch over here because I'm going to show you some real world stuff that we've got going here because I definitely wanted to uh, jump into this a little bit. So, of course, as always, I love to show you guys what I'm doing here. So I went to go run this, but there's this note that in order to have this modal, you have to have uh, Olama 50513, uh, right? And so in order to have that, you either have to be running Llama CPP straight or to grab Olama Llama and run against it, you gotta have to have the pre-release. Now I couldn't figure out how to get the pre-release for Olama to run on Windows. So if anybody knows, hit me up, leave a comment for everybody else down here. Now for Linux, it was able to run pretty easily because you just simply, you know, grab this, run it on your machine. When you do this, change this to, you know, 513. And I'll put this comment down, you know, down in the comments below so you guys can make sure you guys can grab this. But if you run this and run it with the, you know, 5.13, you can download and make sure that you install the latest version of Olama here. Now, once we have that version of Olama running, then it's pretty simple to run it the way we normally would. And I want to show you guys what I got with this because you can definitely build this in and integrate it into your code and make it start something you can start running on. But I don't think it's quite ready for production yet and I'll show you why why I'm saying that all right so you can see here that I had this run and I'm gonna scroll up here a little bit to kind of show you what I was doing here so again running this command here I was able to get it to where it was pulling down and install the latest versions right so download the latest bundle recognize that I was running an Nvidia GPU now this is the one that I've done on my AI DIY series before so if you haven't seen this make sure you check it out and I'm going to include this into the playlist so hopefully we'll see something right about here where you can uh, go and hit on this playlist to go see how I built this AI this DIY AI so this is an old machine uh, you could, guarantee you could find this thing out on a used mark, you know, Facebook marketplace or like, or the like for two, 300 bucks. I slapped in, uh, an Nvidia. Um, what did I put in something with 16 gigs of Ram? I don't know, or 16 gig, 12 gigs of GRAM, right? It was about $250. So for 500 bucks, I had a great AI machine ready to rock and roll. So, um, I downloaded then and ran Olama run, you know, five, uh, four mini, right? This originally, then I started to run some of your basic, you know, why is the sky blue? But then I went over to the Llama toolkit where we could see um, some of their own cookbooks here. And I grabbed some of their own context and added into the context window here, right? Now, at first I thought this was really good. And I actually did some things, explain the calculus of how to calculate the amount of water being held up by a dam, right? So it did a pretty good job explaining this. And I think it, and it came back really fast, right? And over here, you can see as I'm running this, this is running, well, looks like Olama's not, you know, we're gonna have to wake it up here in a second and then we'll be able to show you. But it did a pretty good job of showing this and responded really quickly. And giving, you can tell it gave a really good logical, and this is definitely where you see it excelling, right? The detail in which it gave, um, and this, so now I gave it a different test and I said, hey, I have a, you know, 20,000 in my savings account. I wanna receive 4% profit per year. You know, help me solve this question, right? So I gave it this input and it started to, or sorry, I gave it this input. And I said also, think steps by step carefully, right? So there's some things you can do to really trigger it to get into start to think this and to do these uh, reasoning models, right? So it broke it down and really gave a good thorough output, right? And so this was pretty impressive. Now, um, then it kind of started to go off the rails and was like, wait, what went wrong here, right? And it started to go off and really kind of go off into the rails. Now, what then happened was really weird about this was it just started just hallucinating like crazy. And you can see it started repeating things over and over and over again. Definitely got very, very, very confused. So I control seed out of this after a while, which took it a long time to get back to me on. 
Then I used this cookbook, uh, this example from the cookbook that they gave. So this is using their own example. So I'm using their own answers from their test. Took me a minute to figure out you have to do the triple, you know, quotes to get it to end a multi-line. And as I started to do this, man, this thing started to hallucinate just really quickly. And really, you can even tell because you can see this pattern here, right? A1, A1, A1. Like, it started to just really hallucinate like crazy. Um, and then it did it and hit it and did it again. And so it even said, hey, I'm in a recent. Like, I didn't even do this. It did this. Checked out by Sam. It, was, it kept going, kept going, kept going. So you can see this hallucinations. Still kept going. Like, and now it's really off into the weeds. So... You can definitely see that this got really quick, uh, crazy, really quick. But so if we say, uh, you know, tell me a story about math, make sure to break it down step by step. So if I do this, you can definitely see that it's running 4.7, you know, size here for the mini latest 100% GPU on this machine. Again, this machine has um, uh, some 12 gigs of GRAM. You can see that it broke it down, did a pretty good job, right? Tell me step by step, because normally when I'd asked for a story before, it didn't break it down step by step. So it did a pretty good job here. Um, but ultimately, I think uh, there's definitely still some work that we've got to do. I would definitely say we're nowhere near ready for production. Now, granted, this is a pre release version of Olama. I'm not necessarily suggesting that this is totally ready for prime time. Um, one of the things that I did think was really interesting is that um, as it is running here, Olam is actually when you give it a little bit of load, even with um, uh, with a GPU, and it should be running, and it is running fully against the GPU as we saw here, right? So if you notice that, whoops, that it is running against you know the full 100% GPU. But I thought something that was really interesting was when I ran top against this, and I looked at the CPUs that was running. So this machine has eight CPU, eight core on it. It's an old uh, AMD FX, like I said, super old, crazy old machine. Uh, fast space heater my my office is getting really warm right now so if i say so let's go use their own example again here right and um, let me go grab that really quick so this is the example that's coming from the cookbook here right so if i grab this and i say um then you can see it so it's starting to come under load here pretty quickly but the interesting thing is that it's not actually using multiple of the cpus it puts all that oh that's funny that one that one actually worked this time so i don't know if i do that a second time if it will work the second time this time it works so maybe it had to be thinking and processing it had that served up um tell me a long story about how math will Create world peace. Make sure to break it down step by step. Um, now, as you can see here, the CPU load is all loaded onto one CPU, which is kind of interesting to me. I would have expected the CPU load to be something slightly different to have multi-threaded that a little bit better um, to break that down. But you can definitely tell that it's you know using the Olama against the GPU. Now, this did do a pretty good job pretty quick. So maybe that hallucination was just when it was loading up and getting started. It is possible because I had just downloaded that and was just getting that started. But overall, like, this is a pre-release version. I'm going to get at that. Like this is only a couple days out. I think we're going to see some improvements here. I'm really excited by this because I love seeing work and efficiency going into these small models. I think this is really where the future of LMs actually is going to be is when developers can get these into their hands. We've seen time and time again, history has proved that when developer tools are provided for them, we see great things happen. And so I like to see this being put into the hands of developers where developers can work against this. These large models are almost impossible for a developer to actually be able to get their hands around, right? Yeah, they can call into APIs and they can leverage it, but they actually can't leverage the whole technology. I think we'll be able to take these small LMs, build something productive with them and get something pretty amazing out of them. Now, what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I love to have a great discussion. The best compliment you can give me is to leave a comment down below. Here at Startup Hack, we love to train 
software developers and our licensed coding boot camps and to build custom software solutions for companies. So reach out to us at startuphack.com slash Spencer. We'd love to help you out. Want to become a software developer but don't want to spend four years in college and rack up massive student loan debts? Think you need technical expertise to get started? Welcome to Startup Hack, a better way to start your software career without student loans and years without income. One-on-one -on -one tutoring is included so you never get stuck and have guidance through the whole process. No technical experience is necessary. Learn at your own pace and in your own space. Startup Hack has worked with local state agencies in your area to make it so that qualifying students can get the program costs covered entirely and students can start earning while they learn. StartupHacks.net Coding Bootcamp was a game changer for my career. As someone with no prior programming experience, I was initially intimidated by the idea of learning to code. But the instructors at Startup Hack broke down complex concepts into easy to understand lessons and provided hands-on projects that really cemented my understanding. The curriculum was comprehensive and up-to-date and got me ready for my first job. What really set Startup Hack apart was to focus on practical, real-world skills. Thanks to Startup Hack, I landed my dream job as a .NET developer within weeks of graduating. I went from knowing nothing about code to building professional grade web applications in just a few intense months. If you're looking to break into .NET development or level up your coding skills, I cannot recommend Startup Hack enough. Complete our three month coding boot camp, gain hands on experience, and land a paid internship. With two years of experience, on average, our graduates are making over $80,000 per year. The three month program includes technologies from Microsoft, Google, and Facebook. No debt, just a quick path to earning. Check out startuphack.com to code your future and start today.